I'm Juan Trias de Ves. I'm, the, I'm your teacher. Some of you, you know me very well. I'm coordinator of Design Studio Area. And I'm here to introduce, to present this new year of uh, Forus program. First of all, I have to apologize the presence of um, Jose Luis, your director, or director, or, or boss, because he had an appointment, an academical appointment, so he, he cannot be here. So I, I'm going to be here in, in two representations for the Design Studio area and Jose Luis. So this is a big responsibility. I hope it's going to be good. So today this is a, this is a new uh, Forus program, but at the same time we're inaugurating a new format because this has been organized by the Design Studio area. So you will see there's something new. If you have talked with some friends from other years, you will see there's some difference. Um, first of all, as I have to say, I, I'm very grateful to the whole team of the Design Studio. I'm here representing the, the team, but in fact, this has been a hard job, a hard work with uh, Felipe Pic, uh, Miquel Lacasta, and mainly, you know, Jaime Valle. He's a very uh, worker, a hard worker. And David Masip, Iñaki Arizu, and Iñu Ugalde, uh, Ugalde. And Sinta Luis, that she's not here because she doesn't feel very well. So Sinta, just, uh, I wish you that you, uh, your recovery very quickly. I give you the welcoming as well to those students that, you're, that they are not here, but they are connecting online. Okay, this is then the introduction. And, and I have prepared a written to be clear, and I hope that you, it's going to be interesting for you. Yes? Okay. Well, this is the, the, zoom, the zoom in of the presentation. Many of you may wonder about the meaning of the graphic poster of this year's forum program. What does this image convey to us? And at the same time, why the leap into the void? The image shows us an old photograph of a fragile plane starting the flight in an impetuous way. At the same time, you see two people who seem to greet the plane. The scene is certainly suggestive, as it induces us to imagine various meanings. Podemos entender varios significados. At first, we might think that the characters that appear from behind are saying goodbye to the pilot of the plane. Maybe they are friends wishing him a safe flight. But if we look more closely, the farewell gestures are exaggerated, demasiado exagerados. Is it really a farewell scene? Isn't it rather an exclamation of joy? An exaltation of victory of an achieved objective? No es más una fiesta, una celebración, que una despedida? Upon further observation, we might realize that it is the Wright brothers celebrating the success of the plane's ascent, como se leva el avión. We imagine that they have worked hard for a prodigious goal, to fly, volar. And it seems they have succeeded. But the plane does not fly alone. The small figure of a pilot is clearly seen. And then the question arises, what is the pilot feeling? Is he experiencing the exaltation of joy of the observers? Or rather, might he be experiencing vertigo? Vertigo. The vertigo of jumping into the world, the leap into the uncertainty and the risk assumed, but also the self-conviction of inaugurating the future, the future of aviation, of air mobility, the future of a world heading towards globalization. In this sense, the pilot is a pioneer, yes, he's a pioneer, but he's, he's not the only one. The progress of science, technology, and wonder is unstoppable. The pilot leaps into the future. But there is still another reading of this image. As a teacher, as we delve, as profundizamos, into the image, we can also imagine in a figurative sense that you, all of you, the students, are represented by the pilot. And we, your teachers, like the Wright brothers, Wright brothers, would like to celebrate your jump into the world. This is the meaning of this edition of the Forum Program, to make you aware of your, of your time, of your time. 
the awareness of what you still do not know, of, of what you can learn and what you can work on in the future. We recognize signs that show uncertainty and the, and the evolution towards a profound socioeconomic transformation. The eruption of the digital age, the migratory movements produced by the geopolitical imbalance, the growing threat of environment destabilization, and the acceleration of a new world order catalyzed by the first global pandemic, all challenge us to be aware of these multiple spheres. Todo está cambiando. Architecture participates in this transformation in its different aspects, whether urban, environmental, or constructive. La arquitectura va a participar de estos cambios. The forum program is structured around several themes that, for each one of its contents, make up a constellation of strategic fields on which architecture, architecture will develop, exerting an influence of the global socioeconomic. Housing, research, the evolution of technologies, environmental commitment, contemporary values of tradition, and the evolution of the metropolis notion will be addressed as some of the most relevant aspects of our time in transformation. This series of conferences, organized by the Department of Projects of the School of Architecture, as I said, inaugurates a new format based on the dialogue between two professionals in this sector. Throughout seven sessions, the topics mentioned will be addressed and debated, always with an eye on the evolution and transformation of the world. In short, the leap into the void, the forum of this year aims to invoke self-awareness about the present time of architecture in its different aspects and fields of application. With today's inauguration, with a session entitled The Dissolution of the Functional Typology, the accelerated transformation of habitat requirements as housing models, workspaces, urban space, even places for leisure, will be discussed. This first session will be led by Luis Basabe, founding partner of the, of the architecture studio Arenas Basabe Palacio, and Rosa Rulli Bertrand, founding partner of Bailo Rulli Associates, whom we thank for their presence. Next, I turn the floor over to Inigo Gualde, who will introduce today's forum moderate and session. Thank you very much, and I expect all, I ask for all your attention. Thank you very much, Juan. As Juan has said, we have today with us uh, Luis Basabe and Rosa Rui, and uh, they have came to speak about the dissolution of functional typology from different points of view. It's, uh, it's one. So Rosa uh, is here, is from Barcelona, but she has told me just five minutes ago that he used to live in close to Madrid. I didn't know this, but she studied here in Barcelona and she founded in 1990 her office together with her partner Manel Bailo and they develop uh, projects in different scales, urban scale, architecture and interior design. She has been lecturer in this School of Architecture in Design Studio and Final Degree Project and I think uh, she has been professor in uh, interior design in the school BAU here in Barcelona. And uh, she has participated in competitions, uh, national and international. And she has won awards together with Manuel Bailo and uh, Luis Basabe. He's from Madrid. He has studied his degree in Graz, Austria and he founded uh, his studio together with Enrique Arenas and Luis Palacio, Arenas Basabe Palacio. And they, uh, they participate in national and international competitions. They have won a lot of competitions and they developed projects here in Spain and, uh, and Europe, mainly in Austria. And uh, I think Rosa is the, the one that's gonna speak first. Okay, but uh, Gabriel? Well, I, I think it's Luis who's gonna present first. Sorry. We are changing the presentation. And as I said, uh, they are gonna speak about this topic. So we have to take notes and after the dissertations, 
we are going to have a debate about this topic of the dissolution of functional typology. So the third time, uh, we have the opportunity to ask them questions about the, the topic, not just their work, but uh, mainly about this topic. So, Rosa. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, the same as uh, Joan said, uh, thanks uh, to the organizers of the forums and thanks to invite me. Uh, I think it's a, well, it's a pleasure to stay here and uh, speak with you about this uh, topic. Uh, as I have only 30 minutes uh, <laughs> to speak with you, uh, I'll try to be uh, uh, to, to, to explain um, to, po to put 10 points 10 points uh, to debate uh, later. Okay, um, I have made uh, not a lecture on my on my own uh, work, but. Uh, Reflections, reflections, affirmations, theoretical, practical, some works. Uh, well, because uh, I, re I recommend you when, when that, that the most important uh, in architecture, uh, if you are going to develop uh, projects and, um, and be an active uh, architect, uh, it's very important to know where do we want to arrive. And uh, it's very important always. Uh, even if you have to decide only a door, uh, how it will be, uh, it's important to know why is the door for, why, why has the door this form, another form, uh, well, a, a lot of questions. And this is the first that I, that I, that I will explain you. Uh, in this diapo, uh, it's only one minute, uh, well, no, there are uh, some photographs of a, a, a Catalan photograph uh, called Xavier Rivas, ¿vale? that he's an anthropologist too, and a photograph that uh, now lives in Brighton. So a lot of years ago, he went to Brighton to work in the Brighton University. Uh, he takes some photographs, took some photographs after the Olympic Games of the public space in Barcelona. And these photographs that are from 1992 but are even in the, in the first uh, point of uh, advising that uh, in this moment, 1992, there was like a problem uh, on the city activities no? in the public space. No? Uh, his images criticize the excessive monumentally of the public space and the uh, the lack of uh, domestic, no, or domestic um, areas, no, uh, for people, and this is, uh, well, these are very funny photographs. That uh, is like uh, to begin to speak about dissolution of typology, no, is like uh, people, no, having lunch uh, inside a, no, a truck, no, nearby the beach, or another people, no, having lunch in the mountain, no or uh, a person no, reading the newspaper, it's very small, no? uh, not in the square that it's uh, <laughs> designed for Barcelona uh, municipality, but in the landscape and so on. No? And another images that perhaps you have seen uh, along your life, uh, similar uh, uh, meaning. Uh, the first for me is, uh, we are talking about typology. ¿vale? Uh, we are talking about uh, building types in architecture. And uh, we need to know what does it mean, no? because uh, it's supposed that we know what does it mean, but uh, we are going to, to center the, the, <clears throat> the meaning of these terms. No? Uh, the typology, no? uh, we, it perhaps uh, in the beginning uh, of the architecture, there were architects, they made buildings, but it's not till the Renaissance uh, when uh, the architects uh, converged into theoretical uh, and uh, made some books, no? written some books uh, to speak about architecture. No? And in this moment, when an architect began to speak about architecture, like is the case of Alberti, no? uh, this is the moment that they uh, have to uh, organize the architecture. 
they look to the past and then try to uh, begin to classify uh, what architecture has made. And not only, not only by a stylistic uh, uh, concept, by uh, for the, this, this word that is typology, that uh, it has uh, something to do with the uses, the program, the activities. No? Uh, well, there was a lot of discussion about the, 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 the meaning of typology, uh, things in common between different projects, but not stylistic. Uh, it, it, a lot of uh, discussion. Uh, I think it finishes in a very important article right from Rafael Moneo. Rafael Moneo is a Spanish architect, very important. And in 1982, uh, he, write, uh, uh, he wrote uh, an article called on typology, ¿vale? uh, recognizing the importance of the typology because uh, it's like uh, the logical of architecture and um, it's like uh, the, the, common, uh, the common image of the architecture to speak with the society. No? The society has an image uh, of the buildings and the architects uh, evolve no? the, the, the buildings. And in the middle, no? uh, if the typology is well-defined no? and you can speak about churches, no? Uh, no? Uh, uh, theatres or housing. Housing is more la is later in this history, but uh, I, I will explain. Uh, people understand, no? like an image, and architects can order no? the evolution no? of churches, the evolution of theatres, and the evolution of all type of buildings. Vale? Uh, after Alberti, there is Vignoli, there is Palladio, eh, bueno, a lot. Eh, it's even, even bueno, eh, Duran that eh, we comment a little more. And eh, I don't know if you, if you know eh, Dubut. Dubut is a French architect that eh, he eh, wrote this book, Arquitectura Civil, Maisons de Ville, the campaign. Eh, he, he tries to uh, classify uh, or and project in advance uh, 28 uh, houses, 28 villas, villas uh, for uh, well, in the landscape, no, for for <laughs> for middle class. And uh, but the most important in all that is Duran. That uh, perhaps you have studied Duran in 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 your composition classes or theoretical of history of architecture. But Duran. Uh, <laughs> Uh, wrote this book that uh, first uh, he made a recoil of buildings of all types, no? uh, ancients, moderns, no? uh, beautiful, uh, big, small, etc. And he uh, draws all the buildings, ¿vale? all the buildings in, 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 the, in, the, 18, in the, the beginning of the 19th century. And afterwards he made uh, uh, lessons of architecture on these buildings. And uh, he tried to um, tell us how to project. No, uh, if you want to project, you have to put uh, an, an, no? an axis afterwards, a reticula afterwards. Uh, you put this part, the other part, and he has drawn the lot, a lot of parts of the buildings. No, and uh, like like uh, a recipe. No, uh, if you want to no? to build a theater, is this way? If you want a church, is that, etc., etc., etc. No, as you can see, these are some pages of his book. Uh, well, this we stay here. Of, remember Duran uh, and, and imagine that there is an architect that uh, have, uh, have written that book uh, trying to explain us how to make a building no, with uh, specific instructions uh, on form and, and organization of the spaces, dimensions, etc., etc. No? Uh, in the in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Dubut, no, uh, the the one little that it's here, no, in this book, uh, it's it's is later than Duran a book, and uh, it dares even to put the same plan, no, with several facades, no, a Gothic facade, a Egyptian facade, 
And this is a demonstration that uh, for him, the typology is not a stylistic uh, thing. You can have the same plan no? and several uh, styles. No? It's only that you no, begin to think about typology. No? Typology, what is typology? Well, we don't know. Uh, if we speak about housing, only remind you that uh, housing, massive housing, housing for, for the people, no, not palaces, not villas, eh? uh, architects didn't build uh, housing, massive housing. There was a construction that uh, the constructors made by themselves. No? Only they began to take an interest on uh, housing uh, in the moment that, uh, I am speaking about Europe mainly, when Europe has to, bueno, when the cities, uh, the industrialization no? uh, in the cities is, is a real fact, and we have cities, uh, the most examples are from Germany, because Germany is the mother of the industrialization in Europe, and in the, after the First uh, World War, uh, cities like Frankfurt, for example, or Berlin, no? have to uh, 30,000 people coming every year from the town to the city no? to live. No? Imagine that you have to increase the buildings, 3,000 no? uh, apartments every year no? uh, to receive uh, the people from the town because uh, Germany is uh, in, well, in the industrialization no? and they need uh, people from the for the factories no? to work them. Then, in, in the beginning of the 20th century, no? um, well, they, they have this problem. No? They have to make a lot of buildings. No? And uh, it began uh, uh, like a, uh, a discussion. Like today, perhaps, uh, we have this discussion with Twitter. No? Uh, there is a part of the architects no? that say, Hey, the economy, the progress is the most important. We have to typificate the, the architecture. We have to uh, make uh, industrialization, uh, standardization, no? uh, prefabrication. And there are another part of the architects saying, no, the architecture is expression, etc. No? There, there is this debate. But the thing is that they have to make a lot of buildings. No? And uh, bueno, in this moment, no? uh, bueno, they made some... Bueno, some uh, very important architects in Frankfurt, in Berlin, no? to, to, to direct all the, all the, all the operation no? of, uh, of increasing the, the, the cities, no? of the new, new areas. No? And these drawings are only, for example, those, uh, the, the first, uh, in this moment, no? the houses in Berlin were um, this in the... It's right, left, uh, right, right. No, in the left, exactly. The first uh, drawing in the left, uh, the drawing in, in, the, in the middle of the, of, uh, of the slide uh, in the superior part is like, uh, well, there was an industrialization of, for example, the windows. No? Uh, from the, for, until this moment, the windows were the windows you want to make. But in this moment, no, there are only no, uh, these windows, no? the windows from these dimensions. No? Uh, Neue Frankfurt is a new magazine that uh, they made no, to explain no, how the progress of all the uh, buildings no, for, of housing for, uh, for the people from the town. And uh, bueno, the Warhol, uh, this, this uh, newspaper of the <clears throat> right part is uh, of 1931. They explain all the buildings they have made uh, till this moment. Uh, well, uh, there are. Uh, it's sure that you, in your in your history classes, no, uh, of architecture, it's sure that you are going. Uh, someone will explain you uh, these uh, these uh, seedlings, no, uh, these uh, areas, no, uh, uh, of uh, <coughs> extension of, of uh, residential areas uh, around Frankfurt, Berlin, etc. No. Uh, well, you, you see here some, some examples and you imagine no? that, that is the beginning, the beginning of the typology, the Bauhaus that perhaps uh, no? it uh, sounds to you, no? the Bauhaus, uh, a school uh, of architecture that was made in these times no? in the Republic of Weimar, no? in these times from the 1907 no? in, 
in Alemania, in Germany, uh, the Bauhaus has a lot of architects that is sure that you know, no? Gropius, uh, uh, Mies, uh, it, it was taught uh, a lot of architects no? that were involved in all these, uh, all these buildings. And they uh, draw the first, uh, typo the first modern typology on housing that is more or less the same that we have today's uh, little changes uh, is it's thinking in in uh, not in the ancient city that is very dense and very with not air no not voids and not, not a space for the people and the new uh, cities no are the cities of the of the uh, garden areas no uh, no uh, good uh, ventilation no? of the of the interior of the houses is the beginning of, is the beginning is all the polygon areas of all Europe begin here, no? began here, no? in these models that they draw in the 1920, 1925, 1930, no? before the Second World War, uh, making all the Germany uh, cities uh, grow. Vale? This is the beginning of the typology well, for housing, eh? for housing, for massive housing. No? Um, now, nowadays, nowadays uh, you see that is. Uh, I told you, no. Uh, I think we are. Uh, things have not uh, changed enough, enough uh, to the different uh, lifestyle that we have, to the different thoughts uh, that we have, to the different uh, contemporary situation, socio-economic, uh, industrial, technologic, all. No? Uh, I, I, I used to. I think that the the cityscape uh, doesn't lie. No? And when you no, uh, walk along uh, the European cities, no? you see the same as you saw years ago. I, I, haven't, I haven't put here photographs of new buildings because the most part of new buildings have the same urban elements, windows, balconies, uh, roofs. Uh, perhaps they have changed a little the form but not enough as we have changed. No? I used to explain uh, one thing for me very important is the, mm, to understand uh, the high relation uh, between the morphology of the city, the cityscape, no? the, and the typology. No? Uh, the buildings and the city are totally evolved. <laughs> And I use always these three images, no? uh, is Paris, Amsterdam and Barcelona, eh? only to say that in Paris, uh, you know, it's rainy more than Barcelona and uh, perhaps the same as Amsterdam and they made this roof, no? uh, the roof and it's very typical no? to see this mansarda, no? mansarda roof, no? when they have the service rooms, no? And you see that and you say, hey, it's Paris, no? because uh, this way of making the buildings no? uh, reminds you of Paris. In Amsterdam, they have, uh, in, this, in Paris, uh, the facades were uh, a structural element, okay? and you see the order no? of the windows no? and the columns no? that uh, order no? all that. Vale? And the roof no? uh, is the structure on the facades, no? the, first fa the main facade and the uh, back facade. In Amsterdam, uh, they need more light because it's a very dark uh, country, no? And then they want to make a, oof, a very big building, uh, windows always. Then they don't have the facade, uh, a structural facade. They have the the wall between the medianera, no? <laughs> between houses, is the structure, no? And then the roof is not in this direction; it's in the other direction because. This is necessary to make these uh, very big uh, windows that they want. If, we, if you go to Amsterdam, you will see that the windows are bigger than the windows in Paris and in Barcelona, and that the roofs are in the other direction, direction uh, as uh, if we compare with Paris. And in Barcelona, uh, the sun uh, and the, there are not, uh, it's not a rainy city, no? Uh, we have uh, another kind of roof that it's a terrace, no? that it's completely flat, uh, and we use uh, this terrace to go for parties. And you see that in Barcelona we have these holes. I, 
sorry. Ahí pasa el otro. Yes. You have, where is the light? Así. These halls, okay, here, no? here, no? All the buildings in Barcelona has this hall because this flat uh, terrace no? uh, is double and we have air in the middle of the roof because there is so hot in summer that if you have the sun no? uh, directly to the terrace, uh, it will be terrible to live uh, no? uh, beside this, this roof. And then they made two uh, flat roofs and a uh, air no? uh, buffer inside, ¿vale? and this air has to uh, go out, and this go out for these uh, little holes. Well, only to say that when you made a building, you made the cityscape at the same time, and the construction system, the ideas, the, the quantity of light that uh, you are entering inside, the constructive system, all has to do with the uh, cityscape. No? It's the same. Uh, in Barcelona, another, it's, I, I will be quickly, uh, this is an exercise that we made about the balconies in Barcelona. We analyzed uh, three in Sanche uh, no, Island no? and we studied that uh, there are 254 uh, balconies because I have a, a, like a obsession with balconies that are a very obsolete uh, element, urban. No? Uh, for this, for the dimension and for another thing. And then we do this exercise and we, <laughs> we went Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, and we find at the end only two of them, there were a person in the balcony, okay? In the other balconies, we have uh, vegetation, uh, no? uh, well, you, you, you imagine, no? The bicycles, no? Uh, and other things, no? And vegetation and nothing more. And uh, I, I thought that it was a problem of design and typology, but uh, a very good students that I have uh, coming from Sevilla uh, no, uh, convinced me that the, the thing was this, no, the relation between, between the typology and the city. No? And he says, balconies uh, were thought in the beginning of the example. No? This is Paseo de Gracia, no? that people was in the street and cars, no. no? The people was walking along the street and then the balconies has a, have a sense because you go out, out of your house to the balcony to see people, how it's working, you have no noise of cars, you have no contamination, etc. Cetera, et cetera, no? Afterwards, no, we, uh, this is the same Paseo de Gracia, no? you have all these cars, then the balcony has no sense and it's an obsolete uh, element, but we continue no? doing the same balcony. We have to thought about that. Uh, in the future. And now we are in the third line, that is, hey, uh, perhaps no, if we change the public space, no, and uh, we made another kind of public space, uh, thinking of the people, uh, no so much cars, uh, bicycles, etc., perhaps we can recover the sense of the balcony. Right? But only that when you think about typologies and housing, no, uh, we have to think about the city too. Uh, then, no, uh, bueno, I, I want to present first uh, only, only to, to make a, a provocation. I don't know if you know this book of uh, Atelier Beaubeau, that it's uh, of 2001. He's <laughs> 21 years ago, no? Atelier Beaubeau on Japan, because we are speaking all the time about Europe, no? that it's this kind of, of subjects, no? but in Japan, no? Uh, this uh, group of architects uh, made this book that it's a paradigm of the book that uh, made in Tokyo uh, is a recopilation no, of uh, these new situations that doesn't, um, doesn't have nothing to do with the classical typologies of the buildings. No? We see here factories that are, that are mixed with uh, housing or, or uh, attractions parks that are mixed with housing or you see, no, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, roads, uh, railroads that are mixed with, with buildings uh, and these kind of things that uh, only, only uh, happen in Japan, no? that uh, you have to look for the, a very small void to make a neat building, a new building because the density, you know, the island is very small, etc., etc. No? Then uh, it's like, say, hey, what happens? Perhaps we don't have to think anymore in typologies, no? Because uh, 
the wall goes in that direction. But I think that, uh, that not, because the book itself is a recopilation of and other typologies, but they are typologies too. No? That there are situations no? that they are not usual or classical, but uh, that we have to uh, take uh, no? attention to them. Vale? Uh, the housing, along all this time that we are speaking, what are the causes no? that, uh, that make the types, uh, building types, housing building types to evolve? No? Uh, then it's a resume only. Eh? Perhaps we can, we can I speak about individual and social activities. No? Uh, what are the things that make the type of the same type? This type that I told you that began in the Bauhaus or perhaps in the beginning of uh, of the 20th century in Germany, no? uh, when city, cities uh, grow, uh, social, no? social uh, activities. No? Uh, for example, no? bueno, I put two examples in the beginning uh, of the garden city in. England, England uh, uh, was to a very industrialized area. No, uh, is the beginning of the <laughs> industrial revolution. Okay, and people has like uh, are living in the cities, no, uh, nearby the factories, no, uh, very insane uh, housing. And then uh, there is some people, a bit uh, thought about a garden. No? a garden area, no? a garden city in, in the surroundings of the cities. No? And well, they design, this is an only to open your mind to that there are people that in these conditions uh, try to take the city out of the city. No? To the, it's like a nostalgia of the green, no? green areas no? in England. And, they, and they, they have the country they have because there were these people thinking that. In England is very different from Barcelona, very different for Germany. No, or I think it, it's the beginning. No, Vienna talks too about the the people who works at the factories and their necessities. Uh, in the middle, we we see uh, this. Ay, otra vez. Sorry. This uh, this are. Um, a demonstration that the Bauhaus, uh, this is Gropius uh, industrialization process to build uh, housing in the Siedlung in Berlin. Vale? And the, 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 the three images are from the same uh, Siedlung. Vale? And uh, because they were very involved with this uh, process and this uh, theory of uh, Germany has to go, uh, no? Uh, uh, on industrialization and factories, and we need to make the buildings, and we need to make the buildings with standardization, etc., etc., etc. No? And this is the beginning of these processes, vale? and this is uh, the typologies in this period. Uh, they are not thought no, on social necessities, the social necessities of the gardens, no, and the spaces and the activities, but on the uh, construction process. It was the most important Pro construction process for uh, it was most important than uh, people, uh, individual or social uh, necessities. Uh, in, the, in the next frame, uh, we have uh, two personalities, no? Le Corbusier, Mies, no? uh, what is their apportation? No? Uh, we, can, we can say that Le Corbusier was the man of the concrete, no? and then uh, technology, is the reason that they uh, made uh, housing different from the others. No? Not social, not <laughs> necessities, not uh, program, uh, not industrialization, but uh, technology. The technology of the concrete, no? uh, there is the no? Le Corbusier, no? uh, says, hey, the concrete, the, the, they are not more uh, facades, structural facades, there are no? uh, columns, and on concrete, and we can make uh, no very big windows, no columns, and this is the new housing. Vale? At the end, no, uh, he projects the unit. Vale? That well, uh, we, you'll, you'll find it in your way of study. And in here, no? we have uh, Mies uh, Lakeshore Drive Apartments in Chicago. No? That it's in the at the end of well, the end no, but uh, in his American part of uh, his time, 
of architect and uh, is the example of uh, steel and glass uh, construction. This is a photograph uh, in, in construction, vale? and, and we can see you know, the transparency and the, the lightness of the, of the, but it was technology. Eh? It was technology and abstraction of the architecture that uh, made this housing, there were housing here, uh, this, this type. And in the last uh, column, perhaps we see another kinds of uh, perhaps energy rehabilitation no? uh, that it's more now in our dialogue no? uh, of uh, we have to take profit of ancient buildings uh, or we have to take profit of the new programs no? to control uh, the uh, warm, cool, no? sun, uh, the energetic uh, atmospheres uh, that we can do work in a housing building. Uh, well, only, only to see that uh, even one, only one person, no? in this case is Mies, no? uh, made a history of the typology. In this case, is, in this case is only uh, individual housing. Eh? It's like uh, villas, no? not, not massive housing. But uh, in his career, no? Imagine no? what emotion that in your career no? you begin making the houses on the left no? with uh, a structure <laughs> of, how, no? of uh, bueno, uh, boxes. No? Uh, in 1923, imagine, you discover that perhaps even with bricks, not with the steel near glass, no, no, with bricks, you can make this is the, the brick house of 1933, it's a theoretical project, and you destroy no? the box and you make that. And uh, after in 1950, no, when you are in America uh, and you have discovered the steel and the glass, no, you made the pure abstraction of the transparency or the lightness and the more relation with the landscape that is the fans world house. No? Then even in your, in, this is only to demonstrate that you, when made a project, when you are making a project, no, a proposal, uh, it's very important to know all that, no? even if, what do you think, what you are going to, uh, what are the reasons that you evolve your architecture, no? your own typologies, etc. Et no? it's, it's, it's a largo recorrido, no? it's, a, it's a work of uh, a lot of years. No? Bueno, and now, I, I put here only four or five examples from Barcelona. Uh, there are Roldan Berengue, I, I was in the, in the FAT, uh, jury last year and they are <laughs> what they have we have about housing that uh, I, I, I i take that no is uh, in the in the left roldan berengue that made this um, this uh, transformation post-industrial architecture taking profit of an ancient factory uh, in la fabra vale? uh, bueno, they they maintain all the building and they only uh, build inside the building a new boxes uh, uh, of uh, bueno, mm, ay, boot, boot uh, boxes no? that were very lightly and they can put uh, boot because uh, the boot is light and then uh, they, they can maintain all the structure that they have. Okay? In the third line, uh, we have Peristoral that they uh, made a building uh, absolutely all structure, uh, facades with uh, Boot uh, here in in in, in Cornellà de Llobregat, vale? And there are 80, 80, 80 apartments. Uh, perhaps uh, Roldan Berengue, we can say what causes the typology. Then is the post-industrial. There is a complexity. Eh? They have all the all the layers of the housing architecture of today. No energy. We are worried about energy, about typology of uh, living, the activities. No. Uh, well, all, no? technical, etc. cetera. Uh, peristoral, uh, they are worried about uh, energy, about, uh, because they, they, they try to make all the building with uh, wood. Uh, the most important perhaps is the plan, that it's a non-hierarchic uh, plan, because they, they want that all the activities in the in the housing uh, are together, no? uh, not the woman separate from the man and the girls and the uh, all all that all that uh, talking that perhaps you have heard a lot. 
And uh, in the last uh, frame, uh, we see uh, cooperative housing ¿vale? of La Borda, uh, La Borda, the, La Col, that it's a, a group of architects in Barcelona, that the most important for them, uh, it's, a how, it's a boot uh, building too, but the most important is the, um, the collective space, the space that they share between the, all the neighbors of these buildings. ¿vale? And uh, bueno, you see in the plan and the, in the photo. ¿vale? There are two, another time peristoral that they are working to uh, in the intermediate space. Very interesting. Uh, here is in Bob Pastor, the two first, uh, the first and second frame. And uh, they have made in this building a intermediate space that is like a patio inside your house. It's very interesting. Uh, all the facade of brick uh, is uh, the most part is uh, like a jealousy. ¿vale? It's not. Uh, more interesting building and they have another thing they are worried about the parking and the cars and they have uh, they they have the proposal of making par parkings that in the future when we don't have cars uh, you can use for another <laughs> another uses ¿vale? and uh, they well, they try to put uh, natural light and uh, no and and air and in the most uh, the, the right part, we have ACA Arquitectas. No? Uh, this building is in, under construction uh, in Gaba, I think. And it's a very, very thin housing you see here no? in the section. No? That is only, uh, bueno, you see in the plan, I, I think that the plan is more interesting here in the right, uh, in the middle, no? that it's only one room, another room, and two, uh, two bueno, I will explain a project of mine of uh, um, this buffer, no? this, this uh, climate buffer, this uh, space, no? intermediate space between interior and exterior, no? uh, an energetic space that, uh, tal, but only with, when a room uh, inside and using these two galleries no? to connect all the building. ¿vale? Uh, it's, it's too much, no? Uh, no? Bueno, and only very quickly, three projects. This is a project of my students in La Etzat del Vallès. ¿vale? I don't know if you know that there is a competition, Solar de Catlón, ¿vale? that is a, an, an international competition to make a prototype no? uh, of zero energy no? Uh, no? <laughs> use. ¿vale? And, uh, bueno, uh, La Etzat, uh, the Etzat uh, goes uh, a lot of times to this, uh, has, has gone a lot of times to this competition. It consists to make a prototype and then you have to build it here uh, to, uh, and to put it in, in a truck to go to the city that made the competition. This was in Budapest. And then you have to build it in Budapest, for example, uh, in one month. Uh, but only these, these are the students in Budapest after, after finishing the construction. ¿vale? And uh, I put this uh, example because uh, for me it's an example of changing the way of thinking. In this case, uh, bueno, in this competition, if you see it uh, all the years, uh, they made, uh, they used to make um, artifacts, uh, energetic artifacts, no? uh, artifacts uh, that the architecture changes a lot, no? his form to um, solar energy, no? uh, it's like a machine, it's like an engineering machine. ¿vale? And then the side that after all the, all the years of uh, artifacts, uh, they thought that the problem was in the person in, of us that we have a, a lifestyle that it's not uh, correct uh, because it, it, we are addict to energy, okay? And we have to change, no, not the buildings, we have to change no? our habits, no? And then study uh, their habits, no? And then, uh, then decide uh, how to live, how to make a house that you adapt to the house and not, uh, not uh, the contrary, okay? And then they made this prototype, that's, this is the plan, ¿vale? that uh, is made uh, of a lot of filters. No? This plan has uh, two laterals that are uh, to recap energy, to, to control water, consume the water, different kinds of water, no? the, the water from a deposit, the water to reutilize, the reuse. Uh, etc. And the rooms, no, that there are no rooms because you can move the filters. Uh, 
the rooms with a mobiliary that is uh, mobile, that is that, no? it indicates you that perhaps in summer is better that you have lunch in the in the most uh, north part, and in in uh, in winter perhaps you are going to have lunch in the south part, no? Because uh, this is what the houses made, no? And this proposal well, was very interesting, no? This, this is only that, okay? And um, only a, pro a professional uh, housing project that uh, I have, I have just built. Bueno, we are building the, the third and fourth phase, and we have uh, finished the first and second, and it's based on a climate buffer, vale? Uh, this is in San Cugat, and we have the opportunity no, to build this all this uh, uh, area, no? uh, and we can thought about uh, all our urbanism, all, all the whole area, not only one building, but the garden, the possibilities, etc. Vale? And then in the beginning, we thought that uh, bueno, the position is very good. You have a relation with the infrastructure, but uh, with the landscape too. Uh, you have the garden uh, working with the building, okay? And then we decide that there are the first drawing, no? The most important was to make a, a housing and a, a, no? a perimetral uh, area, green area and climate area, no? To make uh, a relation with the exterior, okay? This is only drawings, it's only to pass, vale? Then we study uh, a little uh, the origin of the galleries and all this intermediate space, no? And we discover that uh, the first galleries uh, they made in Galicia, okay? And they were made, imagine the, the first uh, image in the left, no? They were made not to, not to live here, no. They were made because in Galicia uh, it's very rainy and uh, it's raining all the time, okay? And then it's raining, your walls are uh, no, um, wet, no? And the sun goes out and it's not, the, the sun only can uh, dry the walls, but not uh, put warm inside your house because your walls are always uh, wet. Walls wet, sun, dry. Yeah. Then uh, they discover, well, they discovered that perhaps putting a glass, no? uh, the glass uh, protects the walls uh, from the, for the rain. And then uh, even when the sun goes to the wall, to the glasses, uh, you can get some warm, uh, free warm for the sun uh, because the walls are dry. And, and uh, this is the, the, the meaning, bueno, okay. Then uh, in La Coruña, this is La Coruña, uh, the way of construction that, uh, there are some historicists that they think that is because they, they are um, in front of the, of the port of La Coruña, okay. And this was the construction system to build, um, you know, in the in the in the boats, no, the the cabins, no, for the captain are made from uh, first it was a wood uh, structure and glass, and this uh, inspiration of the no, of the boats that are in front of the port, no, they put in the houses, and this is the origin of the galleries, vale? that it's a climatic. Uh, origin, but uh, copying it from the boats that are in front. Okay, then uh, after wall, well, no, they begin like the this uh, this uh, this point uh, that well, no, with no so uh, ambitious to have a space, but uh, but they learn no to make the space a bit big, and uh, there are two points more for the gallery. So climate buffer, uh, you can say it in English better climate buffer, and uh, they discover that uh, they have a, an, an space, a, another space in the house that it has no use, not, not ne necessary use because uh, well, all the uses were in the house, no? and rooms, no? uh, kitchen, etc. And then uh, they, they, they discover that uh, this space, you can use this space for another, no? another things you want to do that uh, they call the cultural, <laughs> cultural uses, because it depends on the culture of the city that you are making this uh, buffer. Vale? And uh, besides, no? uh, this, this space uh, is the space that connects you 
with the landscape or the cityscape, no? Because it's like a, a vitrine, a mirador, no? A, a, well, that, that, that kind. No? In Barcelona, we have uh, galleries too, vale? And uh, they, they work different from La Coruña, but uh, they are posterior, eh? that the ones from La Coruña, vale? And they, they work uh, with this, uh, no? La, what was the word? Bueno, las persianas, no? This, this element from, no, that you use to put uh, to to put when when the sun no is uh, directly to the glasses no and you uh, in winter perhaps no um, you take out and well, there is a it's only to initiate then we no study to make these galleries okay in this uh, well, studying these opportunities. Uh, we have uh, different buildings because in one building it's necessary to put a commercial area and then uh, we decide to move the form uh, and uh, in order to all the flats have uh, the sun itself well, and we we build the this part with uh, uh with uh, we wanted in the beginning we wanted to make it by boot but in the mediterranean uh, in the exterior boot is uh, is not so sustainable because um, it's very hard the, the sun is very hard and it uh, dries wood uh, too much vale? then we build it with uh, uh, light uh, concrete vale? prefabricated vale? and this is these spaces bam, 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 I pass, bueno, in the interior it's funny because uh, bueno, this space is flexible for uses and uh, it has been very well used during the pandemic. Uh, it's interesting because after this building, we made an office building that I show you a moment, no? Uh, no? In San Cugatu. And we try to import this uh, domestic, uh, domestic piece uh, to the building, to the office building, and put here, no? In the sun orientation, no? Like uh, we put here in the. Well, Another day I can explain that. And it's curious because uh, in the housing building, the gallery, climate buffer, uh, the neighbors use them to work during the pandemic. And in the offices, this space that is the same climate buffer, they use it for domestic uses, no? like they were at home. No? Then uh, the duality of these spaces, uh, well, we can taste only that and thanks and another day I can explain the feelings. Vale? Ya está. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Rosa has been very interesting. The evolution from the concept of typology, uh, the treaties, especially by Duran. Uh, the evolution in the Bauhaus time. Uh, you have said that technology is what make able this change. And uh, other proposals, uh, as the one by Atelier Bobo in 2001. Sí, 2001. Sí. And uh, finally, example, your students in Decathlon competition yeah. and even works uh, by your studio in Can Matas and San Cugat, learning from these galleries in, in Galicia, very interesting. She has opened a debate because the idea is not to close the, the topic of dissolution of fun, functional typology. Probably we are not going to solve this, this problem. We are going to debate a little bit about this. And now uh, Luis is going to speak probably. Do you prefer there? Thank you. Okay. No, no, sí, no. Sí. Great. Thank you. I prefer to speak standing up, sorry because otherwise I will fall asleep and you even more. So thank you very much. And 
And yeah, thank you for the invitation to, to the week, to, to Juan, Jaime, and Inigo. And, and, and thank you very specially, Rosa, for the, for the wonderful presentation. I hope uh, that, that I show something that can be a complement to that, but I think everything about typology is already said, so I don't know, let's see how it, how I manage to, to, to I come from a wholly uh, different point of view. I, I will show actually only two projects, actually one project and a small kind of preview of another uh, old competition. Uh, which I think address the topic of the of the dissolution of the typology, but actually from a very uh, much more widened point of view in the sense of, of from an urban planning and design scale. No? So uh, if we can start with a, uh, oh, sorry, I have this. No? Yeah, perfecto. Uh, if I had to use only one slide for this lecture as so I was telling Rosa, Federico Correa was in Etsam some years ago, and he talked for two hours just with a photo of his partner there, who was uh, recently passed away, and, and it was a wonderful lecture. No? But if I had to talk just with one picture, it could be this one, which is not one of our projects, but this is something we discovered in a workshop in, in India, in, in, this is close to the city of Ahmedabad. This is in Gandhinagar. This is a modern city made after the model of Chandigarh, more or, more or less. And in the left, we see what some a group of engineers actually built in the, in the 70s. This is social housing. The minimal housing unit in that time was 12 0.5 square meters, you can imagine. No? So these were 12.5 square meters housing units. And this is a, a very nice uh, drawing made by, by a former student of, of, of Ahmedabad, uh, like more or less 25 years later, no? of, of what happened there. No? And I think it is really beautiful. No? So uh, what is the architecture? Uh, in which of these two pictures are actually the, the, the architecture? Is it this probably overplanned structure uh, in which everything was, I assume, more or less well defined? Or is it what life has been able to do on that structure uh, through the years, no? which has become a much more complex uh, building, built environment? I'm sure able to, to address many more necessities and demands and, and, and values and able to content a lot of different uh, semantics, no? which, which were for sure not in the initial project. Nevertheless, I think this was a, a, a good project in the sense that it allowed all these things to happen. No? So uh, we discovered this uh, in 2020, uh, 2005, sorry. Uh, you can imagine, no? in Madrid, people were building what we call the PAUs. No? These are these neighborhoods which surround Madrid, extremely overplanned. With they, they use the word en sanche, no? I think it's a blasphemy to use that word for, for these constructs. No? Because they are really building these blocks one by one, no? which are like 150 times 100 meters. No? These are cities which cannot change because you would really need to, to, to move 200 families to, to, to change one of those blocks. These kind of structures are able to, to change all the time. No? So I stop talking about this picture because otherwise I will really only talk about it. No? Um, okay, so I will show uh, the, very briefly, this is uh, addressing the topic of dissolution. I found it really inspiring that, that we were invited to talk about this topic uh, because it has been uh, something we have used a lot in, in our urban projects. Uh, this is a, a project which did not go on. We, we did it many years ago in Europe and Nine, but I think we planted the ideas of the of the second project I'm going to show you. This was, we called it 
the dispersed edge of a dispersed city. You can imagine, this, the, you, you see this railway, this railway is connecting Vienna and Graz, which are more or less, let's say, two hours um, separated by, by train. And it looks all the time like this. It's a kind of continuous line of some old villages, some more recent uh, developments, some industrial spots, and, and, and let's say a rosary of, of, of train stations. And we were asked to develop one of these uh, hotspots there. No? So, uh, this was the, the, the most suburban. I insist this was also contemporary to that uh, first question. People were over planning in Madrid. And we were really addressed with a kind of suburbanity, which is uh, really the most extreme we can find in Europe. No? So, we began to reflect about the, what it means. Who, for, who is going to inhabit that kind of city? No? Who, who lives there? No? That was our question. In fact, the project, we called it ex-citizen, no? because uh, we were dealing about the, the, the citizen of that, I, I, of that new city, this kind of new, I don't know, metropolis or, or, or Zwischenstadt. There are a lot of names for it. No? I love this image of, of Adolf Loh's uh, wife's bedroom. I don't know, they had different bedrooms. Uh, I don't judge, but, but this was his wife's bedroom in the same house. And, and it, it's really nice, no? It's, it's kind of, I don't know, you would like to be here in a Viennese winter for sure, no? But I think it represents very good uh, some of the values of, of the bourgeois housing uh, mentality, of, of, of the dream of housing which we could find before the world wars. No? We would say in, in, in the first part of, of Bright's Head Revisited, no? that would be the values which, are, which we would look for. No? This is, of course, a, a shameless simplification. If we say it is comfort plus intimacy, no? I'm sure we could do a brainstorming and these values are much more complex. But I think this kind of extreme comfort and, and extreme intimacy, uh, you can find it even in the, in the, in the first examples of, of social housing, you know, these enclosed spaces, the, the, the love of, of, of tiny spaces in the Wiedermeyer uh, housing in, in, in Central Europe. Uh, this is completely different. To, of course, we, we have to think uh, many million uh, people died in, in very few years. It was really a, a traumatic moment. The, 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 of course, the Second World War, also preceded by the First World War, everything changed completely. No, I don't know. In any case, let's say not many years later, 50 years later, the students of, of Venturi and Denise Scott Brown do this kind of, of, of drawing, recollecting also the dreams. This is the house, the suburban house, which dreams that it has a kind of Versailles, uh, entrance and, and it has really a, a castle a wall around and whatever. No? And, and, and this kind of dreams, actually complexes, no? become elements of, of this new urbanity. So what is the essence of, of this Austrian suburb? But I think we can extrapolate it to other places. I think Spain is a bit different and, uh, well, we couldn't use all this for sure for, for the area of Madrid, but in this case, we, we, we thought, looking for two, if we said we have comfort and intimacy as, as the two main values, it is a, an architect simplification. It's, we need operative, easy, simplified comfort. I would say uh, here is, uh, we see that the, the main value of the suburb is property. No? I think it's, of course, it's also infrastructure. No, I think both are here very clear. No, you, you have a house which looks like a toy. Actually, it has uh, an objectuality. It, it's an object. You, you have to be able to, to draw it on a catalog, probably, or, or whatever. No, it has to be a product. No, and then of course the connectivity, which is also here. No, so I think uh, this is from a very interesting artist project made by some architects which this, did this series of postcards in, 
in Vienna some years ago. This is from a real catalog from the area where we did this competition. This was a Baumeister, a constructor, which offered this kind of upgrades. No, you, you, you have earned a bit more money, you can add some more value to your house no? and, and become a, a more important representative of your community. No? So we found it really interesting, no? this kind of obsession for the object, obsession for, for the fragment, for, for, for the very well-defined object, as a way kind of uh, to understand the suburb and to go further in that direction in order to, of course, we want to die, downplay individualism, which is destroying urbanity, but we don't want to go there and tell the people, don't be individualist. No, that, that is beyond our, I, I don't know, maybe we should become uh, something else, no? But, but for sure, not as architects, but we can create structures which are more complex and which read those values and therefore will work in that environment, but are able to create more complex environments in which community is able to happen. No? So we really uh, dissolved absolutely the, the typology. This is just some example. We, we, we did kind of one, two, three, four, five, up to six floor elements, no? But then uh, each house had its own garage. It's, each house or some of the houses had uh, their own winter garden, and this was very important. It became a, a tool we have used more often. The garden becomes also an object. You know, the defense, no? We have seen this, this, this obsession for property. We have to define our realm, so that realm is the garden, so it becomes an, an object. In this uh, soup, that we create there in this kind of, of paella, no? We, we use that word, I think it's, it's beyond may, maybe a kind of joke. It is really a serious way of understanding the planning of urban tissues, no? Like, it's more like cooking a rice than preparing some cakes or whatever, no? There we can really introduce, for instance, the, the public. Also, if we downplay it to an objectual situation, no? So, so at the end, we, we began to, to, to generate this kind of, of tissues in which many structuring uh, uh, patterns uh, could be found. Uh, we will not be there, but, but the, the houses have some relationship to each other no? and whatever. But at the end, it becomes the field of superposition. No? That is for us very important. This is one of our favorite, I would say, like one of our home uh, artists, no? So we, 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 we love Dan Graham, no? We, we, it's kind of in the office. If we don't know how to, if we are discussing, then we can use like the authority. Dan Graham said whatever, no? And then everybody listens, no? It's kind of, now be, because I think he was really sharp talking about the, about the, the suburb. This is an, a very famous installation he did. It's just so simple as, that he puts a, a, a television on the street in which you see what the people are watching inside. No? It is only that, no? And it creates such a distortion of, 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 of all the uh, structure, privacy structure of the suburb, that it really, uh, it creates a, a really disrupting superposition, no? So that is what we want to do. No? So uh, at the end, this becomes something uh, which is able to change. I can transform that garage into something else. I can sell my garage. I can buy a winter garden. I don't need to change my whole environment for another one. That is like we live now. I move to another flat. But I can really uh, create a city which is open as a process, no? a, a liquid city. No? That is, again, I, we could go back, back to the Indian picture. No? So now I go to the project we just finished, uh, just uh, this year, I mean, 2021, no? we, we finished it. This is, a, it was also a, a, a European, I don't know if you know European, this is a competition for, for young architects 
young architects under 40, so really, uh, no, but that is, uh, I am already much over 40, so. Uh, but uh, it, it's really uh, nice, it's not only one competition, but it's kind of a program in which 60 more or less sites are proposed by different municipalities and regions in Europe, and well, then some of them are developed, and, and it was really nice. So here, uh, well, just uh, this is just a spot. It was a, a former, I don't know, it was a research center for the reproduction of pigs. No? It was created by the Nazis, actually, to raise pigs during the war. It, it is not a, a site with a strong political character because it was just a farm, actually, no? And it's, it was in public hand, and now a public company is developing it in, into housing. As you see, it is surrounded by strange kind of people, no? On the north, we have a cemetery, no? One of the bigger cemeteries in, in the Viennese area. So these are the good neighbors, no? And then surrounding the other two sites, we have these allotment gardens, no? These, these were gardens which were, these were, this was land of the railway company, and they gave this land without the permission to build to, to many people, no? initially em employees of the railway or whatever, but then to many people, and people have been building illegally there, and now it has been legalized. No? As we arrived there, they were already legalized, no? but it's kind of really tiny houses, no? 50 square meters uh, floor. No, so it was really, again, extremely suburban. So the garden was the, 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 the main element which was there. It was the, the, the value. If you go to Venezia, you build uh, channels, I, I assume, no? Or as Rosa was saying, if, if you go to, if you come to Barcelona, you don't build a kind of uh, Amsterdam ceiling, no? So if you come here, you have to build gardens with hedges and with fences, no? That is what you have in this kind of city. No? So uh, this became the, the, the topic. No? I, I jump actually. Well, let me see. Well, yes. No? So that that was. Uh, this is really the, the first sketch or one of the first sketches we did. Because normally the first sketches are done afterwards because we lose them. But this one we found it. Uh, it was really nice. No? So, so this was the idea. Let's use the garden as an object, as you saw in the other project, that is why I wanted to use it as introduction. This will be fast, no, don't worry. No, but uh, um, let's use the, the garden as object, as a pattern, as, as, as something that creates the structure of, of, of this site, and let's allow people build around it, not inside. Let's conserve the, the, the objectuality of the garden as a value. No? So, uh, wait, because, yeah. So, so that is more or less what we wanted to do. No? Let's create a, a, a support. I don't know if you have read Habraken, that was kind of every student of architecture in the 70s. I didn't, uh, I was not, uh, I am much younger, but I, but I know it. No? They were always with the Habraken books. Uh, uh, like that everybody said, he was like the reference author, no? He talks about the supports, no? The, 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 we have, we need to think always what is the support of architecture on which freedom plays, no? On which changes occur, on which adaption. So let's use the garden as the support, no? So I go back because this slide was a way, this is a, a very simple but very nice uh, diagram from the other book people in the 70s would have, in the other hand, that would be John Turner, no? Kind of the, 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 the big kind of preacher of, of freedom in architecture, no? Let's let people do whatever they want, that will be all right, no? But this is nice, no? To understand that these two diagrams, they cross planning, building, and managing architecture with three sectors of people, the public sector, the, the market and the, the popular sector. So at the end, we would have on the left uh, a slum, more or less, no? that could be a, a really autonomous build and plant and, and everything. And on the right, we would have kind of a, a 
Stalinist uh, neighborhood in, in, in Moscow. No? The state did everything. No? What I like is that actually here in this, in this, in those diagrams, I would say 99% of what we have to decide about architecture, sorry, I go back, is already decided here. So we know if, uh, if we have this of a building, we know already if, if it can be made in concrete or not. Of course, we don't know everything, but we know almost everything which is really relevant. No? We know about which, which housing types, we know already for whom these buildings are going to be, etc. No? So, so that is really important, especially if we are dealing with a previous stage, which is the, the, the urban design of, of an area. No? So on this support of, of gardens, we can really have individuals which buy a plot and, and build there. We can have also cooperatives. These are drawings from the competition and I will show all these things have really happened. No? We can really have uh, fields which can be occupied by, by much more complex communities. We can also have really economically sustainable developments which, for instance, pay for the streets, no? So, I mean, because sometimes, I don't know, as a student, at least, no? And it's all right that you are like that, no? But like the developer and the capital are always like the bodies, no? But this is a public company. They, 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 they deserve to make profit of this. And in this case, it's really clear. They are going to invest it in, in, in further developments. So they can also, take place here, or even big housing institutions like the municipality of Vienna, which is the, the main owner of housing in, in Vienna, no? in, in Austria, no? uh, they can also participate in this development. Oops. Sorry, uh, this deserves uh, an explanation because I don't want to banalize the, the, the Nazi regime using it kind of talking about architecture, no? I think it is. So let's concentrate the, on the reproduction of, 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 of this kind of spaces. No? I am now writing an article about uh, the, the spaces of absolutism no? and Leni Riefenstahl is really important, but I really apologize in the sense that I don't want like to say the Nazis are the country. Of course, the, the Nazis had much bigger uh, uh, evil than any urban evil could be, okay? But, but w that said, I would like to make a reflection about, very shortly, no? What is the, 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 the absolute space, no? The, the overplanned space. Sorry again for the comparison, but I'm talking now about, about space, no? And Lenny Riefenstahl really did this recording. So uh, I don't know if you have, uh, some of you, it's really a, a a must no, to read uh, a French sociologist uh, who passed away 20 years ago, maybe, I think, is Henri Lefebvre. No? He, he wrote a, a really interesting book, many, but, but uh, one of the most interesting for architects is The Production of Space, La Producción del Espacio in Spanish. I, 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 I guess in English it is The Production of Space, but I am not uh, completely sure. So. It's really interesting when, 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 when he says the homogeneous spaces produced by power are only apparently homogeneous. This is not homogeneous in reality. To produce this, you need to create a lot of repression uh, below. So this is really a space which has to be designed in the detail. This is a horrible sentence said by Joseph Goebbels, no? Everything uh, depends on the smallest details. No? This is, it was famous that, that he said that. It's really interesting in the first recording that uh, Leni Riefenstahl did one year before of, of the same event, she begins showing like how they built the stages and how the, the, the young soldiers arrive sweating from a marsh, you know, without shirts and so on. No? the preparation of this kind of, the, the irregularity no, of, of this formation. No? And I, I find it really interesting, the Febres, uh, in, this, in the second recording, none of that is to be seen. It's only the ordering. So the over planning does not mean 
that uh, that structure has to have a bigger order in reality. It only has the appearance of, of a bigger order. But if you do all the blocks exactly the same in a city, people are going to have to adapt and, and, and are going to be, uh, you, have, you are going to have a lot of different situations, no? and you are going to have a, a lot of troubles. No? So that would be a little bit more or less the, the topic. No? If we see the opposite, it's also not uh, dreamland. I mean, uh, Manhattan has really bad spots, but it's the opposite. No? Here we have a very clear structure, absolutely planned, it is rigid in its layer, but it is in a very low layer. It is defining only the, 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 the field of the game, no? So many things can happen there, no? So that is what we did here, no? Uh, actually, no? So we create this grid which only defines where we are going to be and a lot of things can happen around, no? So, well, these are a couple of pictures from the competition, no? And we focus very much our diversity that we want to happen there is not so much in the user of that architecture. We don't care for whom is this architecture because we don't have uh, to decide that, but by whom it's going to be produced. That is really important for us. Who makes architecture? That is the, the key question. And a democratic city will only be really democratic when a lot of people and a lot of scales do have access to the production of the city. If, like La Borda, Rosa just showed it, I, I passed today by, no? uh, it's, it's really a, a relative small group of people who are able to make this for profit, not for maybe an economic profit, but it is for profit. It's, it's cheaper for them, it's, it's better. They, they have access to the production of the city. No? So that is for us very important. No? So we began to design on that support. In the competition, it was thought as things will happen. Of course, you arrive there and you have to build this. No? So we began to think on very different scales, no? which uh, are able to assume also, not only different scales of production, so we have the big blocks, this is social housing. Do you know, did you study the Karl Marx Hof in Vienna, for instance, no? Or this is the same program, no? I will show a, a very beautiful picture. This is built by the same program, uh, founded in, in the 20s, no? which does still exist, no? This is social housing, public housing, no? Then we have other elements, and they assume a structuring role. You see them always in, in the city, no? somewhere at the end. We have also these small, I don't know, I want to call them towers, but I don't find the, the, the English word, these little elements which you see above the, the others. No? And then you have a, a row of different scales in which the city can happen. No? This is just to, be, to, to demonstrate that it's true, no? So uh, this is, we don't have professional photos yet, so I will show some shooting, and this is from, from Google. It, it is uh, more completed, not yet completely the whole neighborhood, but, but yes, that you see, it's, it's true, no? This is what I wanted to show. We have, I showed you in this plan and in this intention, we want to have the big public housing, and this is the big public housing, and this is, a very cheap but, but very beautiful building, no? Which it's, it's really long, no? So and and and, and it is cheap. You, you can afford all this housing, and you can afford then having these smaller structures. No, this is not even the smallest, no? But it's the smallest which I found in a in one of my non-professional photos. No, you have also these kind of smaller structures which are there. This is now a house for three families. We have also. Uh, eh? No, for, this is for four families, sorry. We have also houses for three families in the neighborhood and, and some other architects have done houses for two families. Okay, I recognize we didn't make like for the individual, but it's quite close to, to that, no? So at the end, uh, I showed the two, but they don't explain the whole because they, uh, the interesting is, the thing is that these uh, elements can negotiate 
And they can negotiate in a way we couldn't have planned as a result. We couldn't have planned. We didn't know who, who was going to live there, uh, for which, uh, for whom that was going to be built, but also which budget there was or whatever. So this has been reacting all the time, no? Uh, kind of the architects of one side knew what was happening on the other, no? And, and that was really nice, no? Also very briefly, I don't know, sorry, I lost a little bit of the time. I don't know. Is it, do I have 10 more minutes or yes, yes. is it okay? Because I, I, I didn't, I don't remember when I started. 10 minutes. Okay, perfect, yeah. So uh, we have the gardens, we have the built, uh, the, the, built, in the built environment which flowers around. But this is uh, by far not all the city. We have also the whole in between which happens there, no? Uh, this is a very sensible moment in which a lot of architecture, especially uh, modern architecture no, in the, during the 20th century, has really failed to give an answer. What happens in between? No? So we found also tools to develop that. This is, um, I know it's banal to have a favorite project. No? It's kind of, which is your favorite architect? No? I'm sure your parents ask you or whatever, no? You never, you should never, you should say Thomas Jefferson or something like that, an evasive, no? But uh, I have a favorite landscape project. This is by Sorensen in the 50s, no? This allotment gardens, actually. He was asked to do the same, which is surrounding our site, no? This, he could have said, no, I don't want to do this private uh, uh, things for, for this bourgeois uh, people, no? And then we wouldn't be talking about him, no? I don't know, maybe. But he did this, no? He, he took it serious. He said, okay, let's take property, which is the, the big topic here, no? Let's do the fence, no? Uh, uh, let's, let's take this, uh, the fence as the big topic. But I take it so serious that I make it a space, no? I make a space out of the fence. It is not only a fence between two plots, but it is a space and there is the place of community. No, I, I find it's really magic. No, it's kind of, I don't know, it's a kind of magic trick. No, you, you say it, and, and then you have this incredible place which is missing in the suburb. Exactly, this is the place which is missing in the suburb. No? So that is what we decided to, to design all that in between as a very flexible space in which many things could happen. This is supposed to change, I don't know if you see. But, uh, Many things could happen there, from public to, to, to private, also private uh, appropriations, no? also communal spaces, and also nothing. That is also good. We have just um, grass which grows there, no? and, and we have uh, insects and, and, and hamsters which live there. There is a natural kind of hamster which lives in Austria and is highly protected. No? So at the end, this becomes a kind of battlefield in which uh, spaces can be occupied more or less by, by the different activities. But if nothing happens, it's already important and valuable. No? So I will show a couple of pictures. No? This is a much more urbanized situation. No? They were not supposed to privatize that, but sometimes the, the architects and the, the, the developer uh, kind of make some tricks and so on. No? They, they conquer a bit more than they are allowed to, but it's okay, it's, it's a negotiation. No? Or we have this kind of B-sides, no? they are really important. No? This is a leftover. No? This is working, but it's a place in which most of the time nothing happens because it has less density, it has a, uh, it's the end of the, of the, of the site. No? Our landscape architects design this kind of tables which theoretically can be moved around, but of course they didn't think the legs are really specific for each place, so they cannot move them too much. But it's okay, no? it's, it's a nice intention. We have also this wilderness and ecosystems which are growing there, I think that is also great. Let's say 50 years ago, people would have just planted 
planted ornamental grass and some trees. And now the landscape architects really do environmental studies in order to create mixed vegetation and, and, and balanced ecosystems. No? And also, this is my favorite picture of this neighborhood. This is from the Instagram of, of one of these cooperatives. It's a similar model to, to La Borda, actually. They, they have also, uh, they don't have property of their houses, but they have property. Uh, so the, 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 they owe the association which owes the houses. It's quite interesting, no? But it's really nice. What I like the most here are these pipes, no? This, how do you call uh, mangueras, no? These pipes which come there because they, they, it's really, even the infrastructure, no? Becomes kind of, adaptative no and very briefly just to finish we said we have the gardens we have the buildings we have the in-between but by far is the city not yet done no that is only all that is only the hardware somehow no so we need the software of that no we need management strategies and tools so this is just an illustration which shows that the process of, of, of building is really complicated no? uh, through the centuries. And this is just of the 70s. Now it would be much more. No? So just a couple of building of, of pictures now. Uh, the whole thing had to happen through a collaborative process in which kind of 50 experts were involved. Of course, Austrian public companies are very rich, so they pay for, for all these people. No? Or this is very nice. This was two years before the, the construction of, of the streets started, no? So it was really nice, no, that they did these workshops on site. Of course, they wanted to sell the flats, but it went a bit beyond, no? They even did this uh, summer cinema. This is now, they still do it, but they started doing it before the construction, no? So you have to program this whole structure because uh, otherwise you just have only houses, no? Or this old building, no, of the, of this big farm, I don't know how it worked very well. We have our theories there, but uh, with the ramp and so, but it uh, becomes kind of a social center there, no? Or this, of course, this actor, no? This is really important, which is normally not in the parliament, which is the, which are the, the, the non-human actors, especially the living non-human actors, no? The animals and plants, which also have a space no, to, to participate in this place. No? So this is just. And just as a final image, it's a horrible image sent by the infrastructure engineer so a couple of years ago. They were doing the pipes and so. But I like because I think I like it. I think it's very similar to the Indian image I showed you. No, this is uh, just a lot of. Uh, uh, Square gardens, no, but it becomes something which is goes much farther beyond that. No? So that could be the last slide. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, 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 no es eso, es difícil estar allí con la gente. Me parece brutal, ¿eh? Me ha interesado muchísimo. muchísimo. Thank you very much, Luis. So, uh, it's a little bit late. We have just a quarter of an hour, probably, to open the debate about this topic. Uh, in this case, Luis has uh, showed that depending on the rules you establish for the design of the neighborhood, you can have uh, freedom for designing the different typologies. In fact, as one slide that he has showed, has showed the different typologies that you can implement in their projects, or you can be as a nice uh, picture he has shown, very rigid without freedom for doing anything. So uh, that's uh, our time to, to ask questions to the speakers and even share re reflections with us. Uh, who wants to be the first? It's everything clear. We don't have any doubt. We don't, uh, we haven't thought. Mm -hmm. 
nothing. Olito, eh, Suja, no tenemos prisa, uh, who has the microphone? Que no tenemos prisa, podemos estar. Um, thank you for the presentation. I just wanted to ask, like, we cannot predict the evolution of the society, and it's, I think, one of the biggest challenges that we face to this point. And with Bauhaus and everything, they were trying to see what we can make for the future, and they were trying to predict this modern future. And at this point, we are facing a lot of challenges in terms of economics, in terms of social, global warming, all of this. How do you as architects learn or like try to see what's the starting point of predicting a type typology that could be timeless for the future? Uh, I think that uh, the world is full of people, ¿vale? like you oh, and me and he. And I think that every one of us has to put a little thought in order to, adva to advance. The most important thing is that uh, you made your reflection. You are an architect. You are an architect. You have just perhaps begun to study, but only in this moment you began, you, you, you are an architect. Then, then is your is your the answer to the question must be yours you have to um, discover during these years in the university what are for you the most important points for you because another people will thought another things and at the end the world moves with a lot of uh, proposals right? a lot of proposals there is not only one truth and even less now no? that the world is uh, no, absolutely is not the same as in 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 the, the beginning of the 20th century no that perhaps uh, there was more an unique uh, thought no but now no uh, i think the answer must be yours and it's not important to be predictive because perhaps the most important is for example no uh, what besabe has has explained no to be um to to listen to the people to listen what is important for them if you want to help them no uh, there are for example the examples he has uh, no show us about uh, the importance for these people to have a garden not to have a fence to have these spaces so to understand what is important for the people if you want to help socially the people if you want to uh, be more interested in technology your road is different but it's value too no because uh, some people will work with the social uh, no and turn, and another people will work with the technology and another people will work with the energy right? The most important is that you are interesting. You are truly interested in that, because if you are interested in that, you will do the best, your best. And if you do uh, uh, what uh, another interest, you are not going to do your best. You are only going to do something. Right? Then I think the school is an important opportunity to discover what are your interests and what do you think about future the importance, things, etc., etc., etc. The position is very important in architecture. Thank that you. is my opinion. Yeah. I think, uh, besides all this, uh, we count with a very important thing: is that architecture is not that important. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's 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 good. We can be more relaxed. I mean, we we don't. <laughs> It's funny to see, I don't know, in places I'm thinking of, of historic examples like the city center of La Habana, for instance, which were these kind of bourgeois houses, no? And even some palaces, urban palaces, and they are now full of little flats, no? For instance, no? Or, or, or I don't know if any of you is, you are extremely international, that is really a lack. If any of you is from Croatia, I don't know if you have visited Split, no? That is the, 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 the whole Roman palace of Diocletian, no? It's now the old city, all the old city. I don't know how many uh, thousands of families live there, no? And they have been building. So I think uh, that is something very good, no? That we can be relaxed. 
uh, we can do whatever we want, people will use it however they want. And probably in 20 years they will, but, and it is not that difficult. I, I had, a, we did a, a nice course about, uh, uh, well, an area in the periphery of Madrid, uh, which has typical blocks of the 60s, no? big housing blocks, no? and, and they are in quite bad, bad state and so on. San Cristóbal de Los Angeles, it's, it's a nice neighborhood, but extremely dense, 60s, bad qualities, and so on. And one of my students, it was funny, he did a project in which he moved the blocks, okay? So you say, you are crazy, you cannot move the, a block, no? And he said, wait, to move this block costs, I don't know, five million euros uh, or, or, or whatever, no? Or maybe more or uh, 10 million euros. Uh, he did an economic study, so we can assume if we add 20% more housing units, it is not only affordable, but it's a good business. You will have people wanting to move it in that direction. No? So uh, architecture is much more flexible than we think. This is just a reflection no? that we can be relaxed. On the other hand, once we know architecture is going to change, and we have no idea how, how things are going to develop. I think it's a bad direction to concentrate trying to know how things are going to develop. I think it's better to concentrate in the fact that we cannot know how things are going to develop. And then we can do an architecture which is more easily adaptable. No? We can do all very simple examples, no? but, but uh, when you do a housing type, you think always in a bathroom is really expensive uh, to move. You cannot move a bathroom. I mean, you can, but it costs kind of 10,000 euros to move it or 12,000 euros, no? But to move a, a, a wall, no, it, it, it costs nothing, no? So, so these kind of reflections in the very small things, but also in the planning situation. So I think maybe the idea is to build for the unpredictable more than to, 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 to look for the predictable. I don't know, it's just as a kind of... Reflection, but always with the relax, no? Because uh, no, you can always plant some, how uh, yedra, no? And then the building will be more or less okay, no? So that is uh, an old Spanish joke, I think, from the La Sota, I think, said that, no? But you can always uh, plant a tree in front of the building if it was really wrong, no? So, okay. Yes. <laughs> so we have time just for one more question because it's nearly time. Uh, I have a question that I want to do to the speakers and <laughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, they can. it's my opportunity. So uh, Rosa, you have said that uh, technology was the reason for the change uh, in the typologies in Bauhaus time, apart from social and so on, but you have said technology make able this uh, open the possibility for these changes. You have uh, Luis finished with a slide about the infrastructures of this neighborhood in, in Vienna and um, what new technologies or what not new but technologies do you think that can open the door for new typologies nowadays? Uh, okay. <sighs> Very difficult, and, and I remember now that uh, Juan, no, you give me a book that you were developing here. I think in the week, no, uh, this kind of no research, no, about uh, no about the future of uh, the building of uh, buildings. No, uh, only uh, first an explanation. When I show Bauhaus, I, 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 all the all the projects are co are complex and have all these layers. But the most important in this moment was the technology because uh, in 97 there was uh, it, it began a very hard discussion between Berens and Mutesius that there were two architects and one uh, was convinced that the architecture has to not relax. Eh? Uh, to be very, very, uh, it's like uh, to foster no? Germany in the industrialization and that the, 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 no? the mission for the architects was that. And then 
it doesn't matter, no? Another thing, and the most important is typification, standardization, industrialization, etc., etc. ¿vale? And the Bauhaus was involved with Berens, eh? Berens and all the expressionists uh, no? of uh, German architecture was in the opposite side of that, okay? And uh, they use in this moment, no? Uh, they they have learned about uh, Ford, the Fordismo, no? And the assembly line, no? I I, I try to explain because. Uh, it was that in the Bauhaus and no, no war with it, that I say that uh, they used to, the, 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 the pictures I show you, there were the assembly line, Gropius design, to make a housing building with assembly line, see, with, the, with a railway uh, putting no, the panels no, and the windows. Right? Only in this moment. Have you seen an assembly line? No. no. It's only because your question is like, well, there are a lot of things uh, of industrialization, for example, that we haven't used to make typologies and nothing. Only one day two, two full people of the Bauhaus, not relaxed, but, uh, decided that it was very important. No? And uh, if Ford no, uh, make the factories no, in the assembly line, they can build buildings in this way, right? Now, what is the whole? I don't know. I don't know because uh, I, I, I am, I am, I, I don't. I say that technology are people now in this moment. Sorry, in my diapo of the interest now for the it was not technology in my in my diapo. It was social problems, energy and all the things that uh, can uh, help to do the best uh, in, uh, sustainable uh, housing. And I show you perhaps Francois Roche, do you remember? I think it was uh, a teacher of this school in the beginning. Right? And uh, there was a photograph of the sensors that he put in a wall to understand the temperature of every point in order to project the housing. No? Then I think that the next technology is the program, the, hard, the software. Okay, is uh, how we use no? all this um, no? uh, hard software no? to build better housing. I think perhaps is I, I understand more this uh, part than the industrialization, prefabrication, etc., etc., etc that uh, it, well, it has been abandoned sometimes. Right? But perhaps the software can help us uh, uh, to, to improve. Uh, uh, years ago, uh, I, was, I assist as a student to a grasshopper uh, course in my university. Okay? I, I, I had a lot of students that came to the class with grasshopper and I said, hey, I don't understand that. Then I made a course. No? And it was uh, fantastic, but the, the, there are two schools eh, of Grasshopper, the American school, I don't, uh, I don't agree, and the Frankfurt school. No? Uh, there is the school of uh, Frey Otto and the Grasshopper, ¿vale? thinking of a structural, uh, uh, no? a structural dimension construction, uh, an austerity of the Grasshopper uh, to build better uh, structures, spaces. ¿vale? And there is the no, uh, Delirian uh, Grasshopper American use that is very different. Eh? And I think that Frankfurt uh, School of Grasshopper and how to use software to design better uh, spaces, more sustainable, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, better structures, etc., I think it can, it's interesting for me. And Luis? Yeah. Uh, I fully agree with uh, with that tendency, and I just want to to, to give a, a a reflection, a critical reflection, not against technology, but uh, that we should be careful because the path of technology is not innocent. No, just so there is a philosopher. Many of you might have read something of him, or even this is Felix Watari. No. Uh, he wrote a, a booklet, which I really recommend, it's really read in, in a couple of hours, which is called uh, um, Las, uh, The Three Ecologies or something. I read it in Spanish, so it's Las Tres Ecologies, no? The Three Ecologies. And, and 
it is quite interesting because he's asking himself, uh, the first question is if technology is able to give an answer to the ecological crisis, no? Uh, we, we, we are in fact in an ecological crisis at, uh, and uh, let's put an example. We have uh, cars which are polluting, no? So our first attempt is to make better cars. So to, to, to improve technology, no? But the problem is, that is what Watari says, but also people like Ivan Illich in the 70s would have said, no, it's, it's technology makes the problem bigger, no? Uh, it delays it a little bit, no? It's kind of like, like smoking, no? You delay the problem for for next 30 minutes, no? But it becomes always a little bit bigger, no? So it makes vicious, no? So we make better cars, so we will have more cars. Uh, we, no? so, so this is always a, a process, no? So this is just the second uh, solution which mankind tries is the social one. Okay, let's change uh, the social structures. Okay, let's make prohibitions of cars. Like, let's make, uh, uh, I don't know, structures which regulate the use of cars, whatever, let's uh, put higher taxes, whatever, no? And he says, this is again, no, something which uh, creates repression and whatever, but does not solve the problem, which is going always to be that there. The problem can be reduced, but the pressure of the problem increases. Well, that is his opinion. And he proposes uh, what he would say is, is, is the, Technological revolution does not help. The social revolution also will not solve the problem. We need a psychological revolution. We have to redefine the human being, no? And that is where I really liked and I, I kind of underlined what you said when you showed this beautiful project of your students and, and you, of course, in the Solar Decathlon. I like it because I think it really goes to the point. It is not about making better social panels, also not about improving the orientation, but it is really about changing our living patterns. No? So this is nothing against technology, which has it, it but it, I think it, what Ari shows that the, that the, the borders of, of the, the realm which, in which technology can be really the decisive is limited, no? So I, I like really very much, no? We have to change, I think you, you said, we have to change, no? Ourselves, no? And not so much uh, improve technology. This is, of course, a counterpoint, but I fully agree that the digital technology looks like the, the path, no? Okay, thank or you very much. response uh, to him in this project that I have to explain so quickly, but there were very, very, um, funny things that I'm sure that you like. For example, uh, you, you can choose the water you take every moment. No? You have the water from the line of water, you have the water from the rain deposit, you have the water from the reuse water, and then you say, okay, uh, I'll take the reuse. No? You can choose the water. No? You, have, you, you can choose, for example, the water. No? It, it was in, very interesting because this was a part. And, and, at the end, they couldn't do that, but uh, they wanted to make like an app, no? In order that uh, he sent you the app. Uh, okay, tonight is better you you sleep in, in this point, no? In, yeah, it's... in this area because it will be the best, no? Or or in the other, no? And because the the technology, for example, Francois Roch, no? With the sensors, no? Uh, knowing all the points of the house, how it's working, no? Uh, can can. Can, well, can help you uh, in your habits, no? The technology can help in your habits, no? To, because, uh, well, uh, this is, and uh, perhaps besides that, no? Uh, we want, no, the human being, uh, we want, no, if it is raining, we don't want the rain. And if it is sun, we don't, we want the rain, no? Like we yeah. were speaking about <laughs> before the lecture, because now, well, there is no water in Spain in yeah. this moment, no? And, uh, but when rain, no, we want the sun, no? We, yeah. we always want the opposite, no? We have, no? And we have been building uh, constructions, no? In order to get the opposite we have in this moment, no? And hmm. perhaps we have to change, no? Uh, and we have to interaction, no? To interactuate with the things happen, 
that happens no in order to take profit of them and not in the contrary no bueno that works yeah, yeah no them. absolutely no. Nice. it says the psychological yes thing. psychological <laughs> okay i was watching at uh, oriol carrasco <laughs> where you, we were speaking about this he's one of the speakers of other uh, forum in this in this series of uh, conferences and i was thinking uh, for sure the the, the new technology uh, we need researchers to arrive to this new technology. So uh, it's something because we are over time. Uh, and I throw the question to Oriol for, for the next forum. And uh, it's very interesting, at least for me, that the, uh, this uh, leap into the void continues from one topic, the dissolution of functional typology, to other topics like, for example, the uh, paper of researchers in architecture. So thank you very much uh, to all of you. We will continue on 28th of February with the next forum. I, uh, yeah, 28th at seven o'clock here. And uh, we continue debating about this leap to the void. Thank you very much.